Thank you very much. And uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Dana Wolf, our executive producer, and myself, uh, I'm just uh, thrilled to welcome you. When we scheduled this event some uh, five months ago, we had no idea it would be so timely. Just in the past month, the uh, Mitchell Report was released, naming some 88 Major League Baseball players alleged to have used steroids and uh, uh, other drugs. Roger Clemens' denials have been heard in 60 Minutes and were front page news in Sunday's New York Times. Uh, Record-breaking sprinter Marion Jones was sentenced to six weeks in prison, or six months, I should say, in prison for lying to a federal grand jury about steroid use. Uh, congressional hearings uh, on steroid use and the Mitchell Report actually started today in Washington. Uh, closer to home, just a few days ago, Ben Johnson dropped out as our panelist on his counsel's insistence because of Johnson's involvement in a, le a related legal case that was just noticed for trial. Well, timely, we certainly are, but what is the debate? This is not a debate about whether cheating in sports should be accepted. That would hardly be interesting. Instead, it's about whether the rules governing professional sports should ban performance-enhancing drugs. After all, we routinely use performance-enhancing drugs uh, to enhance our uh, mental performance. A virtual pharmacopoeia of drugs is used to help people, including minors, stay awake, improve concentration, alter moods. And the whole point of competitive sports is for spectators to see athletes striving to be the very best they can be. We want their training and equipment to use the best science and technology. So why is the use of performance enhancing drugs an exception? Is there persuasive evidence that these drugs are health risks? If so, how do those risks stack up against the risk athletes assume every day by getting into a racing car or a boxing ring or on a football field or a baseball diamond? Why shouldn't athletes make their own informed determinations about risks and benefits of performance-enhancing drugs? And how should we think about the wisdom of rules that are inherently so intrusive and difficult to enforce? Well, to help us grapple with these interesting questions, we have an exciting panel, including professional athletes and medical experts. And as our moderator, we have Bob Costas, perhaps the most famous sportscaster on television and radio today. Bob, the evening is yours. Thank you again, Bob. So this is the sixth debate of the second Intelligence Squared U.S. series. The resolution being debated tonight is, formally, you know what it is, but formally it is, we should accept performance-enhancing drugs in competitive sports. Here's a brief overview of the way the evening will work. Members of each team will alternate in presenting their side of the argument, and the presentations are limited to seven minutes each. When opening arguments are complete, I'll open up the floor to brief questions from the audience. And after the Q&A, each debater will make a final two-minute summation. And finally, you will vote on tonight's motion with the keypad attached to the armrest of your seat, and I'll announce your decision on which side carried the day or the evening when uh, the festivities conclude. All right, now to introduce the panel, and please hold your applause until all six are introduced. For the motion former policy analyst for the Cato Institute, senior editor and investigative journalist for Reason Magazine, Radley Balco, on the far end. Professor of Pediatrics and Bioethics and director of the program in Medical Ethics at the University of Wisconsin, Norman Faust. And do a hero chair in Practical Ethics at the University of Oxford and director of the Oxford Center for Practical Ethics, Julian Savalescu. Against the motion, former host and creator of The Sports Machine, the award-winning sportscaster, George Michael. The former Atlanta Brave, two-time National League MVP, multiple Golden Glove Award winner, and founder of the I Won't Cheat Foundation, Dale Murphy. And the former chairman of the World Anti-Doping Agency from 1999 through 2007, chancellor of McGill University and partner at the Canadian law firm Steichman Elliott, Richard Pound. 